Terry Vanderheiden here, picking up where we left off last week, where I'm showing you all the steps from creating the image on location, taking it into Lightroom for processing, and then we take that same image into Photoshop and do some finishing work on it, and then finally get it set up for printing and hang it on your wall. This is part two of this series, so if you missed the first episode, I'll leave a link in the description below, also a link up here so you can go there and check it out to catch up. Let's get into Photoshop and put the finishing touches on this image. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this image and the first thing I always do is I make a new layer. You can do it by dragging it down to that plus or you can hit Command or Control J to get it up there if you wanted to do that. So we've got this image, we like it pretty much, but there are just a few details of things that we would maybe wanna fix. I really like the remove possibilities inside of Photoshop. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here to the remove tool, click on this, and we're gonna to go to the one that says remove. It's the one with the little stars next to it. So now what we're gonna do is get really, really detailed. We're gonna take our zoom tool and we're gonna start looking around and see some areas of things that maybe are distracting. So let's grab our remove tool. And again, we're working on our own layer here, so that's pretty cool. And we're gonna click up the top of the remove. We have up here, we can use AI or turn AI off. So I wanna just turn AI off for this right now. And then I also want to create a new layer. This will give us a new layer of all of our, our changes that we've done. So let's come through here and I wanna take a little spot like that that's light. I'm gonna take that little blurred swirl and take that out. And there's another light spot there. I don't want anything that's gonna distract me from enjoying just the waterfall. So we've picked those few things there and let's go ahead and click that. We'll let it go through its process. This is where you have to take the time and be really detailed about your work. The work that you're doing here is gonna be, this could be big on your wall, right? So you wanna make sure people enjoy it. As we look through here, we're gonna see what's distracting. There's another little, couple little dots of, I don't know what that is, but we're gonna remove it. Same thing here. And I'm just holding the space bar down. That turns in the little hand and allows me to move around inside of Photoshop. Let's go ahead and click again. Make some more removes. And you see over here that Photoshop will keep adding a layer of what it's removed. So if we didn't want that, we can click and bring it right back just by turning off that layer. So it's super handy to have all your removes onto a separate layer. All right, so here's something that is something to kind of, and this, everything comes down to personal preference, right? What I'm not really loving about this scene is this log that's coming up through here. I don't mind this one quite as much at first, but let's just take a look. Let's see what it looks like to remove this one here. So let's grab our remove and we're gonna make the brush a little bit bigger and we're just gonna come along here. And let's remove that. So we wanna remove that log. Let's see how Photoshop does. We'll click okay going to put that all up onto its own layer, which is really great. Let's turn it off and on. Looks pretty good. There's a little softness right here. So let's go in and zoom in a little bit. A little bit of softness that I see here, a little bit up here. And of course, the way we fix that, I just did a video on how to use the remove tools, but um, I'll leave a link in that as well. We go to the clone tool leave it about 30%. And we're just gonna clone some areas that are nearby to kind of solve that little blur. So we'll click here and hold the uh, option key or alt key down if you're on a PC and click. And that's gonna be where we're gonna grab pixels from. And we're just gonna dissolve that little line that's there. Again, we're just dissolving any of the things that we're gonna do. And if your is not set up this way, make sure your clone tool is set up at 30%, flows 100%. Very, very important to select through all layers because that will give us all the information off of these layers right here. And again, we're put working on this main layer. So if we don't like this, we can always go back and make a few changes. Let's 
go through here. Just look at this dissolve. Anywhere there's a little bit of, and the more you click, the more defined it gets, right? You're 30%, you do it three times, you'll be right out close to 100% by the time you're done. All right, so that's looking pretty good. And again, we gotta be pretty fussy about this because it's gonna be uh, in a large image, right? It's gonna be on the wall and people are gonna wanna look at it and see if there's, you know, they're, they're not looking for problems at all, but you don't want it, you don't want their eyes to get attracted to anything that's that's a little off. Okay, as we're going through here, I found something I don't really like, so we're just gonna come up here and remove that lichen or whatever that is there, hit the remove button. So this is how I work on an image, right? We're gonna go through and we're gonna just look at every little last thing and see what it is that we wanna change in it. So now we're starting to get a little fussier and I come up here and I say, you know what? I'm not sure I like this limb up here. So let's go ahead and remove that. And again, you can do yours any way you want. Personal preference will allow you to do that. I'm gonna take things out that distract me. This is gonna be on my wall for a long time. I wanna make sure that when people look at this, they're not getting distracted by anything else. They're looking at the waterfall, which is what I want them to look at. I want them to follow the waterfall down because we shot this at an angle to go from top to bottom. And I wanna make sure that they are spending the time with their eyes looking at that and not getting distracted by other things like limbs or rocks or something that has a mark on it that might distract them. Here's another thing here. There's this log here that's in this water, which is okay. But again, let's take a look and see what it looks like if we get rid of it. So we're just gonna come in here. Again, we're using our remove tools inside of Photoshop. So you can see this is not, it's not rocket science. This is actually pretty simple work, right? Letting Photoshop do most of the work and making the decisions as to how this is supposed to look. So let's see, oh, look what it did. It replaced that. Let, we'll turn that off and on, you can see. So there was water, there was waterfall there, but now we've got just a nice clean waterfall. We don't have that distracting log that's there. I like that a lot better. Look at that. So you can make the same decisions, whatever. This is a little distracting here. Why not? We're in for a pound, right? Let's go ahead and get this taken care of. Little distracting branch that's coming off. And let's take that out. And whenever you do a remove, you have to make sure to get a close look at it because you know Photoshop doesn't know what you want. It's just going by your directions. And we don't wanna have weird little blurry things that don't make sense. Like this little object here, we're gonna just take this and I'm gonna use the, the clone stamp tool and just clone in that stuff down here that's below. And you know what, the dead giveaway is sharp lines, right? Anytime you have sharp lines that are not in nature, then that's where you're gonna get into problems, right? All right, this is all looking pretty good. I don't really care for this little limb down here. So we'll remove that. All right, so this is how we are left. This is how our image is. We're gonna come up here and we're gonna take and make a combo layer. I've showed you this before. It's, let's go ahead and do a new layer. And we'll do a combo layer here. Shift, Option, Command E on the Mac. And if you were on a PC, it would be Shift, Alt, Control, and the letter E. So that makes that combo layer. And now we can work a little bit further on this. This is everything that we've done so far, which I like. And so, and this is the case, where once I've done this, I've got this combo layer, this is when I go in and I do a little bit of sharpening. So we'll go up to Filter, go to Topaz Labs, go to Sharpen. This is what I use. Everybody uses something different. This is what I use. Um, I'm gonna try to do a tutorial on how the sharpening works inside of Topaz one of these days. So we're just gonna go with uh, Too Soft Normal and we'll go ahead and hit apply and get that sharpened up. Again, we don't have to work with any kind of noise issues on this because we shot this on a tripod. We shot it with uh, a very low ISO, so no noise built up even in the shadows, so it looks really good. 
All right, so this is now our sharpened layer. So we're just gonna say sharpen. Now we've got this image sharpened. Now we're gonna do something just a little bit different. I wanna bring attention to our waterfall and get people's focus onto that waterfall. So this is how we're gonna do it. It's gonna, this is gonna sound a little bit weird to you at first. But the first thing we're gonna do, we have a nice sharp image. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate this. And again, Command J will give us a duplication of that. And then what I wanna do is I wanna soften this area. So the way we do that, we go up to, to Filter, and we go into Blur, and we go into Gaussian Blur. Now what we're gonna do is see how we're, we've blurred all of this here? So depending on how much you wanna try this, let's just do on this particular image, and of course, this will work on the vertical or whatever you're working on. Uh, we're just gonna put it at 30. We'll click OK. And now what we've done is we've blurred this, right? This is on its own layer. We turn this off and on. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we only want areas blurred. We don't want the, the whole image blurred, right? So let's go in and make a layer mask. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint on the areas that we want to be super sharp. So we're gonna use black, so we're gonna essentially cut a little hole in this mask. That's how I like to think about it. And we're gonna use our paintbrush. Everything else is at 100%. And let's go ahead and do a little bit of painting. We're making sure that these rocks, this moss, all the way down, that's leading the eye down, all of this is gonna be nice and sharp. All the moss on these rocks, all the little trees, or the little plants that are on the rocks, are nice and sharp. And one of the things I like to do is to look over here at my mask and see, oh, did I make any mistakes? Did I miss anything? You can see that light area there. So I must have missed something down there. Let's go ahead and sharpen that up. Because you want that, we don't really want any, we want the sharpness to go all the way to the bottom. There, and we can see by our mask that we've done that pretty well. And this is all soft up here. Now, obviously to me, that's way too soft, but we have this really cool thing in Photoshop and that's the opacity. So we can take our opacity and bring this back. We bring it back to zero. You can't even tell anything was done. But as we creep this out a little bit, we can kind of create a little bit of softness in those trees, just a little bit of softness. And what's that that's gonna do? We're up to 38% of that softness. And as we look close, let's zoom into a, a section here that has both sharp and soft. You can see what we've done. We've made a nice, real soft area of those, of those trees and those leaves, but yet the waterfall and the moss on the grass, on the, on the rocks is all super sharp. The rocks are sharp. All the way up here, it looks sharp, but this area here around where the trees are, that's soft. And what we can do is we can actually take this a step further. So watch this. Let's go back to where we were. Now we did a mask in here to mask this area out, right? So let's go ahead and just redo that. We're gonna make that all white again and start over. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our brush, we're leaving it 100%, and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna just brush in all the areas that we want sharp, So we're just making everything in this area and we can constantly are checking our masks to make sure if we've missed any areas at all of how we, and again, that softening is all gonna stay right there, right? But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up and we're gonna take our opacity of our brush and we're gonna put that down to about 27%. You could do 30. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the edges here. So as this transition comes into the image, right? We're softening just a little bit of the edges of this. See how that, look at the mask. See how that's gray? That's just a light little bit of that softening. So we have heavier softening out here and then it gradually comes into sharp, which is kind of the way things normally would happen. So now what we've got, there's the opacity at 100% and we've got the super out of focus and then we've got this, kind of a transition area and then we have sharp. But when we bring this whole thing down to 35% or so, the whole thing starts to blend together. We've got super sharp right in here. We got a little mid area here, a transition area, and then we have a softer area back here. 
So the softer areas we want people to look at, but we don't want them to linger on them. We want them to really look at the waterfall, follow the water down and get that to a point where it's something where you say, wow, that looks fantastic. All right, let's make one more new layer up here. We'll do another combo layer. Shift, Option, Command, E. Now we've got that, that layer in place. That's everything. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of burning and dodging. So we come over here to our Dodge tool. We'll grab that, and we're working with the highlights. So let's grab our highlights, and we'll make a brush. And we're going to do this. We're not going to do this very heavy. We'll do it about 20%. So we're working with the dodge brush. We're doing highlights only at 20%. And then as we come over onto some of the white of our waterfall, we can just brighten that up. We're not gonna have to worry about any of the other parts getting bright because we're just working with highlights. So we're brightening up those parts of the waterfall so that we have really a nice intense look on this waterfall, right? So the waterfall's coming down and we're brightening up just the highlights and that's that i think looks pretty darn good so consequently we're done with this except one last thing we're going to put a slight vignette on it and the way i like to do that is again make another combo layer shift command shift option command e make a new layer and now what we're going to do is we're going to take our paintbrush and we're going to paint in black and we're just gonna paint a vignette around the whole thing. Let's make sure this is 100%. That'll be easier to work with. So I don't like to have any light areas leaving the frame because that can distract people. And when you have it at 100%, you can really see what it is that you're vignetting really well. And if you have to come up a little bit, this is your vignette, right? It doesn't have to be a perfect oval. But once we've done this with this painting, so now what we can do is we can come over to this opacity again and bring this way back, right? So let's keep going. I like to go till I can't see it anymore. Then I just go just a little bit more because I don't want it to be too intense. Watch when we turn this off and on. See how it's brighter around the edges, but darker. I think we can go even maybe a little bit less, 20% or so. There takes away some of the really brightness that's happening on the corners and brings your focus into the image. So that's it for this week. Next week, I'll show you all the steps you need to take to get a top quality print from a professional photo lab, how to do a little bit of room design to get the best size, and I'll even show you how I hang it on the wall. See you next time.